Hello, it is me, the Cat Riding Dragon Man. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification. In one day, you heard that right. In less than 24 hours, you can walk away with this AWS certified uh, keychain holder. So if you do end up getting this AWS certification, you get the many perks. So like I said, you can get that keychain holder like I showed you before. I have it, the store right here. So these are the Cloud Practitioner product store. You can get the AWS Certified Tea or the Ladies Certified Tea or the Certified Pen and Journal, which I didn't get. I, I didn't have my tea ready, so I wore my cat shirt because that tea is in the wash. <laughs> by the way, I'm not sponsored by AWS. I just wanted to show that store off to show that I did have that store unlocked, the, the AWS Cloud Practitioner store. So. The Cloud Practitioner certification is likely the easiest certification you can get from AWS. And just because it's the easiest doesn't mean that it doesn't show that you know have knowledge about AWS and you know the general idea about the costs and the general services. So I'm going to tell, be telling you tips on how you can get the certification really easily and of course the steps you can take to take it. And number one step of course to take the certification or tip is to triple click that like button for the YouTube algorithm because it'll help me a lot. All right, the first thing that you should actually do for the um, Cloud Practitioner is, of course, understand what the exam is asking here. So I'm going to link in the description uh, this link. And this is AWS's official link on has an exam guide, a sample questions. And then you're going to need to know some basic things about AWS. And in that, you're going to need to ha know like some basic architectural principles, some basic cloud value proposition. So what is the value of going to the cloud as opposed to staying on premise? Like basic security things, like you don't want to have your services open to the world. You need to know very basic billing stuff and pricing models. Like how does, how are they going to charge you to use their servers and stuff like that? And of course, how to deploy the basics. Now it's recommended by AWS the like get, get six months of experience with AWS. And I don't think you need that. I don't think you need more than like a day of experience, honestly. It's very basic stuff here. You just need to know the services. If you know the services and like the basics of AWS, I believe you can get this in a day. So I also have also linked this Cloud Practitioner exam guide in the description. And this is also important to read as well. But the general gist is that a couple of different types of questions. You have multiple choice and multiple response. So multiple response is just two or more correct responses. So that makes it a little bit more difficult than multiple choice, but it should be still relatively easy. So what you really need to do to pass this is you need to get a 700. So this is based on a score of 100 to 1,000. So 700, it's much easier to, than um, the associates, which you need 720, I believe, and then 750 for the professionals and specialty exams. So, and then you can see what the content that you have here. So billing and pricing. So <laughs> no other AWS certifica certification has billing and pricing as a domain. So this is a really special one here. And of course you need to know technology. It's the highest thing. So these are like what the services are <laughs> and then security and compliance, how you do protect the services. And of course, some cloud concepts like the shared uh, responsibility model, more or, less, more or less like security, but like, Cloud concepts are like what services do for you. So I have also linked in the description of this video the sample questions that you can find for Cloud Practitioner. And of course, these are also very important to, once you understand all the services, you wanna go through a practice exam, of course. And this these only have 10 questions, and of course it has answers at the end as well. But you might wanna go for like maybe another kind of practice exam somewhere on the internet. There's plenty out there. I'm sure you can find one. But let's just go through, read through. So it's usually just like one one line questions, which is really nice. So which AWS service would simplify the migration of a database to AWS? And of course, most of these questions are, just have single responses. So which would simplify the migration of a database to AWS? So the kind of the, the answer is kind of in the name here. So simplify the migration. So database migration service. So if, if you, um, I guess you have to use the question to figure out the answer. And of course, if you kind of don't know what database migration service here is to answer that, but you don't really need to. You kind of need to know that the other ones aren't the answer as well. And of course you can go down to the 
sample questions see, oh, DMS helps users migrate data to AWS quickly and securely. Oh, that's awesome. All right, let's look at some of the key services that you're going to need to know for this certification. So some key services you're going to need to know is, of course, EC2. So this is basically the compute of AWS. So this is where you can run a server out in the cloud, and it'll just, you can have it run. Sorry, my Alexa went off there. <laughs> so EC2, server in the cloud, easy to know. Uh, EBS, so that's the block store. So this is basically the hard drive of the servers. And so you'll need to know that. RDS is basically a database, and it basically is a an EC2 with a database running on it. And it's much safer to do uh, uh, RDS than just have run an EC2 with a database on it. And then S3, very common service, likely will like 100% be on your exam for a cloud practitioner. And S3 is basically a simple storage service. So you can store anything on there and you only pay for what you use. That's a lot of services are like that. So VPC, so this is kind of like virtual private cloud. So you're going to use this if you want to have like networking, solve networking kind of issues. So Lambda, a very, very up and coming service will, will be likely uh, be asked on the exam. And it's also my favorite service because Lambda lets you run code no matter where, um, no matter like where. So you just put in some code into Lambda and you can call that code anytime, anywhere. And you don't have to have a server running anytime, all, all the time, which is great. So SNS, another important one. So this is a simple notification service. So basically, you can have SNS send messages to anything, really. And you can have it spread out with a combo of SQS and SNS. So SQS, a simple queue service. So you can just kind of kind of think how that works. So ELB, Elastic Load Balancer. So I should have mentioned this before when I was talking about EC2. But ELB is basically kind of will balance the load of traffic that is going to your servers. So yeah, that's ELB. And then CloudTrail will monitor your, your API calls. So for example, your service API calls, that is, not your like normal API calls. calls. I'm saying like if someone uh, on your AWS account is doing something like deploying EC2 servers, then you can see with CloudTrail that someone is doing that and you'll see all the contents. So I mentioned a lot of services there and I'm gonna link in the description um, some ADS, AWS terminology guide and it has a lot of key services here and of course most of the ones I just mentioned. So I would just go through this, maybe like make, you don't, I don't think you need to make flashcards for this, but if you don't know any of these, it might be a good idea to make flashcards and if they're helpful for you. So oftentimes I don't really like to use flashcards because it's more like rote memorization, but it could be useful if you want to get this done really quickly and to really have it done really quickly and just not, and forget about it. It's to like go through this and see all the AWS terms like Internet of Things, Managed Cloud Service that lets you connect devices easily and securely interact with cloud applications and other devices. So I would recommend going through this. I'll link it in the description. And just to get an understanding of most of these key services and terms. So another nice thing to do to prepare for this certification, if you have the time though, because this is a six hour long course, is to take the AWS Cloud Practitioner Essentials second edition course. So you can take this in a bunch of different languages, which is nice. But this of course will help you understand the like the AWS cloud like as a whole and it's very good for no matter what role you're in because this you can be in sales legal project managers or even an IT professional so you'll, you'll get through a bunch of different content the only downside really is that it does take six hours and if you're trying to finish this exam in less than 24 hours or in one day then maybe that's not the right goal for you Maybe um, you just go, go through very some of the parts of this course and not all of them. Like for example, you might know some of the services, but you don't know about much about security and the shared responsibility model. In which case you can probably skip through that and go try to understand what you don't understand is what I'm trying to say. All right, to sign up for this course, you just click register and then you will be able to launch the course just like that, and that's pretty easy. And then it'll launch in a new window. So another thing that you would wanna to do to prepare for the certification is we went through um, the 
practice exam and the white paper, or the, we didn't go through the white papers is what I'm trying to say. So I would recommend to go through each of these white papers to, I guess, get a general understanding of um, AWS. So like there's architecting, pricing, support plans, and then overview. So these white papers aren't, okay, well, this one's pretty long, but you don't have to read through all of it. And a lot of it is blank space. Like um, look at look at all this blank space, and, like abstracts and stuff. So I would recommend skimming through this at least because it will give you a good understanding of AWS. And yeah, you don't have to read all of it and like, but it does have good information in it. And this is the um, overview of Amazon Web Service. So overview kind of expected to be pretty long. However, the pricing white paper is very good because it only is 22 pages. So it's of course gonna be jam packed with useful information that you would wanna know for pricing since pricing, as you may know, is 22% of the exam. So for example, you might need to know that um, the, how EC2 charges you and how S3 charges you. So for example, five gigabytes of S3 standard storage, 20,000 get requests, and 20,000 put requests. Oh, this is for the free tier. So yeah, understanding the free tier is of course very useful. I made a video on that two days ago. So I'll uh, link that in the description as well. All right, the architecting white paper has been archived into a new one, into a well-architected white paper or framework. So of course this one is 85 pages again, and you don't have to read the whole thing. It just would help maybe a little bit to make sure you're confident in taking and passing the exam. But I would just go through the key points that you don't understand. Like look at the, the table of contents, see if you don't really understand anything about AWS, and then go through the things that you don't understand. Like the five pillars, you need to know the five pillars of the framework. And then the last thing on the, the, the like FAQ white paper page was to compare AWS support plans. So of course there's three support plans, developer, business, and enterprise. And if this is just your first time learning it, developer would be the first kind of one that you would want to go for just for your account, unless you're doing this for your business or maybe an enterprise. And of course, enterprise is going to be better than business and business is going to be better than developer. Um, but of course, you're going to have to spend more to get to these better roles. And the amount you're going to be paying is of course, so greater 15,000 for enterprise or for business, you can get greater of $100 a month. Of course, there's more things, like you can spend 3% of monthly AWS usage over 1 million, or maybe for developer, greater of $29 a month, which is pretty cheap. So I didn't mention it, but if you read through this, basic support is given to everyone. So if you don't wanna pay anything, then you can get the basic support and includes customer service and communities. So 24 seven access to customer service documentation, white papers and support forms. Also, you get Trusted Advisor, which is an awesome service. So access to the seven core Trusted Advisor checks and guidance to provision of resources following best practices to increase performance and improve security. And of course, your personal health dashboards, see how well your services, if any of them are down, and if any like AWS services go down, which doesn't happen very often, but can happen. Anyways, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I wish you the best of luck on this Cloud Practitioner certification. And if you could, you can give be subscribed to help me out on my channel. Thanks for watching. Peace. Hello, it is me, the cat riding dragon man, and I'm gonna show you how I got. <laughs>